Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm super excited to tell you about the new release of my new mixing course called Mixing Hybrid Acoustic Rock. I wanna spend a little time with you telling you about this course. It is coming on pre-sale in just 48 hours, two days from now. I wanna tell you what makes this course different from any other mixing course you found on the market, why it is for someone that has been mixing for more than a year, whether you're mixing all analog, hybrid, half analog, half in the box, or all in the box. And then after this little uh, little introduction here, you're gonna actually see a, a section of video that comes straight out of the course. So thanks for joining me today. Now I am super excited and super proud to tell you all about this course. I'm really pumped up, so I wanna spend some time with you. So first thing I want you to do is click the link in the description box below. You're gonna come out to this page right here at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. This is the mixing hybrid course. This video here in the center of the page is the same video that you're going to see right after I'm done telling you a little bit about it at the end of this video, so stay tuned, but it's the same video. It's about 13 minutes long. It takes you right inside of the course and shows you different clips from throughout the entire course so you see exactly how this course was designed and all the great things you're gonna learn. So what is Mixing Hybrid? Mixing Hybrid is a course where you're gonna get all of the multi-tracks and mix a song with good old Uncle Dave. You're gonna see me and watch me and participate with me mixing on my SSL with all my analog gear and with some plugins in the box and how we mix in the hybrid workflow. Now, before you click off the video and you say, well, Dave, I'm watching this uh, on a YouTube channel where I mix all in the box, Dave. I only use plugins. I don't have any hardware. I don't have a console. I don't have all that stuff. How is this course gonna pertain to me? I'm gonna explain to you. So first off, in this course, not only do I show you all the analog stuff and how I work with it, but I also explain and walk you through throughout the course how you can emulate the exact workflow that I'm doing here with Analog Gear in your DAW just using plugins. So if you use any third-party plugins by Slate Digital or by FabFilter or by Plugin Alliance or Universal Audio or Acoustica, there are many others where you like using plugins like channel strips, plugins like tape machines, plugins like old analog classic gear plugins like 1176s and LA2As and Pultex and all that stuff. I'm gonna to explain to you and walk you through, just as I'm working in the analog workflow, how you can emulate that without having a single piece of hardware. That's why this course is also gonna to pertain to my folks and all my students and all my fans and followers that work all inside of the box. So the pre-sale starts from 724, July 24th, 2023, to July 30th, 2023, and you're gonna be able to save $100 by using the coupon code SAVE100 at checkout, okay? So make sure you mark that off on your calendar, and depending on when you're watching this video, it may have, the pre-sales may have already started, so you wanna get there right away. It's the only time this is gonna happen. During the pre-sale, you're gonna save 100 bucks on this course, and we'll get to the pricing and the packages in a second. So if you're not on my email list over at homerecordingmadeeasy.com, again, click the link in the description box, go over there if you want to get on the email list so you'll be notified when the pre-sale starts. If you want a reminder, there is a free course right on my website here. If you go back to Home Recording Made Easy and you've never been there before, download this free mixing course right here and it'll put you on my email list so you'll be notified on the 24th when Mixing Hybrid goes on its pre-sale and the course will be available in inside your account automatically on August 1st at 12 noon Eastern Standard. So between 724 and 730 is the pre-sale, the course becomes live and in your account on August 1st, 2023 at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And once it's live and it's in your account, you own it forever. So let me scroll down this page, show you what you get in the course. Next thing I want you to do, here's three of my top students who are already taking the course. Go watch their testimonials. They're gonna tell you, is this course worth the money? Does Uncle Dave say and is live up to what I'm telling you? Watch these three videos, you'll see that it is. Here's some of the different things that you're gonna learn inside of this course. Again, I'm not gonna go through it all right here. I wanna save your time. You can go read this on your own, but I take you through everything. Here's a little bit about Uncle Dave. Here are the pricing options. We have two pricing options. We have a basic package and a pro package. The pro package, you're gonna get a bunch of free bonuses. And again, this is prior to the $100 off. So you take $100 off, 
either one of these packages. In the pro package, you're gonna save about $400 worth of additional bonuses and savings, including a second set of multi-tracks that come along with this course that you don't get in the basic package. So if you want the most savings, I would recommend the pro package, but you can read through all of that. And here are some frequently asked questions. So again, this video is gonna play right after I'm talking here, but I wanna tell you three main things, the three most important things about this hybrid mixing course that is different from any other mixing course you have ever seen. I don't care if it's all in the box. I don't care if it's all out of the box. I don't care if it's half in or half out. Here are the three things that are in my course that you're gonna see part of in this little promo video coming up that makes this different. As I just mentioned, the very first thing is, yes, you may be working all in the box, but I show you how you can emulate that workflow and get very, very similar results to working all analog with the plugins if you're using third-party plugins or what kind of plugins I recommend if you're not into third-party plugins, okay? Channel strips, tape machines, those sorts of things. So don't worry if you don't have any analog gear. The other, but if you have analog gear, whether you're using a console or just maybe a couple extra pieces of hardware or whatever, again, this course will absolutely apply to you because I talk about concepts and techniques. It's not just about what gear I'm using. The gear in and of itself is really kind of meaningless. It's all about the techniques and the concepts. And that's what I spend a lot of time talking about in this course. So number one is I show you how to emulate it with plugins. Point number two, there are a ton of several ear training exercises throughout this course. What do I mean by ear training exercises? We could be working on a certain element in the mix and I spend a lot of time stopping and saying, okay, listen to this thing. Here's what you should be focusing your listening on, okay? Here's how you listen to certain things with EQ and compression and why what I'm hearing and what you should be hearing in the course will help influence the decision I make on gear choice or plug-in choice. Super important. This course will teach you, if you don't already know, or help refine your listening skills, your critical listening skills. This is one of the main features that most courses on the market don't take the time to do. Okay, this course is over five hours long. It takes time to go through all these things. This is like an encyclopedia on the craft of mixing. Okay, so that's number two. Tons of ear training examples and exercises, stopping and starting, and really cueing you in to how to listen, okay? And the third thing, and the most important thing, okay? There are a lot of great things in this course, I admit. But the most important thing, and the reason why this course in particular, in all of my training courses that I've created over the years, the one thing that I did right from the very beginning, and I do it doubly in this course, that no other course really does, is I taught not only show you what I'm using and show you how to twist the knobs and show you how to EQ or all that stuff. It's not what I'm doing. It is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So for example, if we're mixing a, a bass guitar in this course, why am I choosing a certain compressor? What about that compressor sounds different than another compressor? Why am I making the gear choices or the plug-in choices that I'm making? That is super, super critical to you elevating your mixing skills. Anybody can throw a plug in on a screen or put a camera on a piece of gear and show you the nice meters and twist the knobs and say, I'm going to turn this frequency or that frequency or this compression ratio or that attack or that release. But unless you understand why the engineer is picking this particular piece of equipment or this particular plug in, you don't really fully understand the whole concept behind this stuff. I spend a ton of time in this course doing just that, a ton of time. And you'll see a part of that in this upcoming little promo uh, video here for the course. Okay, so those are the three main things and there are many others, but if I had to pick the three things that set this course ab above anything else that you've ever seen, and how do I know that? Because I go out and I purchase a lot of the competition mixing courses and I've watched them and some of them are really great. It's a lot of great educators out there, great. I'm sure you have some of their courses, but none of them spend the time that I spend to show you the concepts and techniques, how it relates to the gear or plugins that you're using, but most importantly, why I'm doing what I'm doing and how that decision-making influences the overall sonic vision of the song that we are mixing. That is so super important. So I want you to stay tuned here. Watch this little 12 minute video. You'll see clips that come right outside the course. And then I want you to go down and I want you to click the button on the 24th, depending on when you're watching this video and purchase this and save yourself $100. I promise you this is the most, the most fully featured 
mixing cores you have ever seen. I promise you that, and I know that because we already have a second hybrid mixing course that was released a little earlier this year, and I've gotten dozens and dozens of emails telling me it's the greatest mixing course they've ever purchased. And it is. It's not about, well, I'm the greatest mixing engineer in the world. Uncle Dave is certainly not the greatest mixing en engineer in the world. But what I think I'm really excel at is I can break this stuff down in a very non-technical way and teach you the things that are important. What's important? What's not important? What to focus on? What not to focus on? That is the key to a good mixing engineer. Knowing what to do and just as important, knowing what not to do. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. Watch this video, click the links in the description box. Make sure you're on the home recording made easy.com email list. Okay, again, go to the homepage, get that a free course. So you'll be notified on the 24th when the pre sale starts and then pick up the course today. And depending on which package you pick, if you pick the pro package, you get a free Skype call with me and a free mix critique when you're done mixing the song. So we're gonna be mixing this song here um, and you're gonna get all the multi tracks and we're gonna walk step by step together. Okay. Thanks so much. I'm super excited and I look forward to seeing you in Mixing Hybrid Acoustic Rock. Maybe, maybe take this eye to eye. We'll see it clearer if we're eye to eye. Hello, friend. I want to welcome you to both HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Let's first talk about um, what song we're going to be mixing. So this is Mixing a hybrid acoustic rock. So we are mixing a song by the duo Elm Treason. Makes this, uh, this particular song really special. It's really cool. It's rock, but it's acoustic rock, meaning all the main guitars in the song are acoustic. It's just a duo, and both these guys play all the different instruments. They play pianos and keyboards and drums and bass and acoustic guitar, and they do all the vocals. So it's really, really cool. I really think you're going to enjoy it. And it's something a little different. It's not like your standard uh, heavy rock tune. It's really cool. It's got that upbeat tempo, but it's acoustic bass rock. So this is a hybrid mixing course, right? So in this course, we're going to be working hybrid. We're going to be working with a combination of hardware and our DAW and a handful of plugins. Okay, so my goal in this course for you is by the end of this course, not only are you gonna get an, uh, an awesome mixing course on all the basic fundamentals of mixing, whether you can work, you can do that in the box or you could be doing it with hardware or a mixture of both, but it's also gonna give you an introduction to how this analog or how this hybrid workflow really, really works. How you kind of uh, work with the analog gear, how it's a little bit different than working in the box, but also more importantly, how it is very, very similar. So whether you're working with all plugins and just in the box and you're checking out this course or whether you're working all analog, much like I am, or whether you're working in a combination of both hybrid, you are gonna be able to get a ton out of this course. Throughout this course, I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking to you how you can emulate this same kind of hybrid or analog workflow, even if you're working all with plugins in the box. And I'm gonna make some plugin recommendations and kind of give you a template for how you can follow along and kind of emulate this same exact workflow. So if you don't have any hardware at all and you don't have a console, you don't have to worry, you're still gonna get a ton out of this course. So who is this course really for? Well, this course is really for anybody depending on the workflow. However, I highly recommend that you have at least six months, preferably a year to two years worth of mixing experience under your belt. And you have a basic understanding on how to be effective with compression and with EQ. Okay, so it sounds okay. It sounds like it's a direct bass or maybe it's a bass plugin, I don't know. But uh, it sounds okay, but it sounds a little thin to me. So there's a couple of ways we could go about this. Again, we're looking for that little bit more modern sound like we did with the drums, but still keeping it dry, but I want it to be thicker. So I bring up our mixer here and I go to our bass. Let's get out the old Ampeg SVT Pro by UA. It's always a good starting point. And let's take a listen to this and see what we got just by dropping this on. Okay, so right out of the box, we're not even picking a preset. That sounds a hundred times better than what we have. I'll bypass the plugin here in Studio One. Listen to the difference. Just drop it on this plugin without even doing anything to it. 
let's just listen to it. I'll go back and forth, watch the plugin. A hundred times better. Let's listen to that in the track. I mean, it's performed pretty darn well and it doesn't need a ton of compression. So now again, I'm thinking about the compressor from a stylistic, again, just adding more vibe and color, much just like we did with the drums. Just trying to now use the gear as a way to add the personality to the track. Not so much to compress it, although I wanna do that anyway. Yeah, and it's subtle. So you can stop the video, rewind it and listen, but it's, it just tightens up that bottom end a little bit. I really like that. See, this is how you gotta experiment. Same thing with plugins. You gotta try stuff, turn the knobs, understand what your, what your gear does, what your tools do, what works and what doesn't work on certain things, whether you're working with hardware, whether you're working with plugins. So if I would've just gave up and said, ah, it's kind of lacking the bottom end, let's pull the patch cables out and try something else, you don't learn anything that way. So always, with all your tools, exaggerate, turn the knobs, figure out what they do. Hear it? How it how it really it helps it helps define the front of the note a little bit more. And again, we're talking subtle, but again, I'm trying to impress on you and give you a little bit of ear training exercise here too. Again, some of this stuff is subtle, right? So again, over this video, even though it's all in high quality audio and high quality video, um, some of these things you really got to you really got to listen and got to focus. Again, remember I've said we're doing a lot of these things in small doses, small moves. We're making little subtle adjustments here. Why? Because the acoustic guitar already sounds great on its own before we EQ'd it and compressed it. But what I'm doing here is I'm using this compressor again as a way to, yes, compress the dynamics, but to also help stylistically what I'm trying to go for. So I'm very, you got, you want to be very particular. And again, this is whether you're in the box or whether you're using hardware or a mixture of both. In order to be, the difference between a, a good engineer and a great engineer or a beginner and, a, and an advanced level engineer is these little subtle things that you, over time, your ear will tune into. But again, it's more than just compression, right? I want you to, I want you really to understand this. And again, I know I keep saying this over and over again. Remember I told you in the intro, Uncle Dave's gonna say these things over and over again because these things are important. These are the details that you will not learn anywhere else. These are the ear training exercises that engineers don't take the time to teach you what to listen for. It's cool to go twist the knobs and look at the meters or look at your plugin and look at everything happening on the screen. But unless you can dial your brain and your ears into what to listen for, you're lost. That's what I'm trying to teach you here. Okay, so without the compressors, listen to the don't, don't, don't. Okay, we're here again. Blue stripe, right up here. We're gonna see how this is gonna work on channel 10. Don't know, I don't typically use this on acoustic guitar, so we're gonna find out but I know what it does sonically, and because I understand my compressors and what they do sonically, that helps. And that's something you really wanna be, again, aware of, whether you're using plugins or whether you're using hardware. What does this stuff do, not just dynamically, but tonally, right? Can you count how many times I've mentioned that in this course so far? Okay, this is interesting. Again, I, I like it. I'm gonna solo this up. Okay, so now, listen to, I want you to listen to the way it sounds a little bit more compact, a little bit more compressed, which is a good thing, but it gives a little bit of this to that upper frequencies on this. I mean, just a little, gives it a, you know, cause this guitar is super dry, super bone dry, super clean, and it still gives it that little bit of, I want. I don't wanna say distortion, cause that's not what it is. A little bit of fur, a little bit of aggression. And again, we haven't put any reverb on this yet, um, cause we're gonna keep this track relatively dry. But here it is without it, and then I'll bring it in on this acoustic solo track. It's 
like you can you can almost it's almost like I could see it right in front of me. I could see the pick hitting the string. It's that immediate sounding to me. It's like it's right here. It pulls it right in front of you. And you can almost you can almost if you close your eyes, you can almost visualize the pick hitting the string. You it's it's that this. It's that present, it's that articulate, which I like in the track. What a big difference, a big difference in a very, I'm very, very pleased with where, where when we're talking about, are we beating the mix? I feel like we're really beating the mix. Very happy with the direction of the overall sonic characteristic of this mix compared to that reference track. It is light years different in a better way. It, you know, again, I can't stress this enough and it's usually not this stark of a difference. It's, you know, but this is great. I'm glad that it is because it's good ear training for all of our students out here that are watching. Is that, again, I'll say it again. You wanna know the difference between what analog does and what just digital in the box does? Here's a great example of the two mixes of how it is completely sonically different and how the analog mix, and we're not even done but just where we are so far, but the accumulation of all these little subtle moves that we've been doing this whole time and all these compressors that we're adding and all the compression from the board and all the things that we've been doing to this point, all of that little compound effect, how that is shaping the sound and it makes the sound sound more done. It sounds more polished, more pro. It's the difference between and here's how the analogy I'll make, and then we'll end this video. But it's, I got it on the top of my head, and, and sometimes it's hard to describe when people say, well, does it really sound any better? And sometimes over videos, it's hard to tell too, especially on YouTube. But even in this course, you're not sitting in the room with me. But here's, the, here's exactly what I hear the difference between these two mixes so far. And again, I'm gonna say this again for everyone that's watching, including Andy and Bobby, I'm not saying that this reference track mix isn't any good. It is a good mix. We heard it at the beginning of the course and we said that. I said that's pretty good. You did a good job, right? It's a working demo, but it's beyond the demo. He didn't just slap it together. He worked on it. It sounds good. But here's the difference. A well mixed track that's done mostly analog with good quality gear compared to all in the box with plugins, assuming that he used maybe a mixture of some third party and some stock plugins. The analog mix sounds like, to me, a very well-pressed, high quality vinyl record that you're listening in your studio or in your house to on a really nice turntable with a good cartridge over a nice set of speakers. You know what that sound sounds like? Anyone that's over the age of 40, you probably do. And if you're under the age of 40, you know, try to find someone that has a nice vinyl record, you know, the old black things. Uh, you know, a, a well, a well cut vinyl master played back on a nice turntable, that sound is what an analog mix sounds like compared to that same song that's not, that sounds like you're listening to an MP3. That's the difference. Maybe take this eye to eye. We'll see it clearer if we 